from sunny Southern California. This is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. All right, you are back. Hey, what's going on? Let's get into some training issues again. Recently, I did a video on personal touch service entitled, We Make the House, We Keep the House, we make huge tips. And in that, I described how making the house is where we put all of our amenities. I'm not talking about cleaning yet, just the amenities. The luggage valet, all the towels, all the shampoos, the TV, TV remote, um, you know, throw pillows, uh, chairs, furniture, all the stuff that we put in the room, coffee maker, right? All that stuff. A hair dryer, iron, ironing board, right? We put all that stuff in the room and that's how we make the house. Those are the standards of the hotel room. Now, when the guest gets in there, they bring their own amenities, their own toothpaste, toothbrush, hair comb, shoes, luggage, all that stuff. So the first level of personal touch service is putting our amenities into place. The second level of personal touch uh, service is taking the things that the guest brings in and having a standard placement of these things. Oh yes, we touch the guest possessions. Why? If you don't touch them, you don't get tips. The people that get tips in the hospitality industry touch your stuff. Like I've said before, Bellman touches your bag. Valet out front parks your car, he touches your car. You tip all these people. When you check in, do you tip the front desk agent? No, why? They don't touch your stuff. Personal touch service is the entertainment aspect in the guest rooms via housekeeping. We keep a house, we make it, then we keep it. And then when we start touching the personal items that the guest brings in and placing them in standard placements, this entertains them. And until you get that in your mind, that it's entertaining to them, it's like Santa Claus. I come back at the end of the day, oh my God, look what they did with my shampoos and my cologne bottles. Look what they did with my shoes. Oh, look what they did with my suitcase and my luggage bag. That entertains them and that's going to fix a lot of problems that you have. If there's some complaint about cleanliness, I guarantee you personal touch service fixes that. Personal touch service is the icing on the cake. Oh God, get that into your head. It's a type of entertainment, a form of show business, and it entertains them when we touch their stuff. Now I'm going to teach you how do you train this? How do you train the housekeepers to touch things and want to touch? and these sort of things. Now, I have recently spoke to general managers, director of rooms, HR directors, and they say, Abel, that's a great idea. We like that, but our department's not ready for that. Most people are chasing their hotel. They're overwhelmed. They don't know how to fix one thing at a time. And there's an order and a protocol. If you don't have this, you can't get that. If you don't have this, you can't go here or there, you know, further on down the line. So we're gonna do one thing at a time in training for personal touch service in the guest room. And it begins with who? The housekeepers? No. The housekeeping staff as a group? No. The supervisors? No. It begins with the executive housekeeper. It begins with you. Let me show you how easy it is to get people used to personal touch training, to uh, uh, adapt to it, to prefer it over not touching, and how to get it going in your entire department. You're gonna do it one step at a time. And it begins with the executive housekeeper. First of all, let me talk about your time management. Your time management as an executive housekeeper begins in the morning in the office. This gives the housekeepers time to get into rooms and get stuff going so they have something done for you to inspect later in the afternoon. Your number one priority as executive housekeeper is in your office in the morning is to take care, answer to, provide for any other department outside of housekeeping that's asking something from you. This is done all in the morning by you, the executive housekeeper. You have your lunch and then in the afternoon for four or five hours, you are in rooms continually all day long. So let's review real quickly what you're going to look at first in personal touch service. Now there's two areas I focus on as a standard that are the the two things that, that represent uh, all that we're gonna do in personal touch service. Now, we're going to do more things, 
But the two basic standards that we must do and that we will always do every single day in the occupied rooms are these two things. You see how the shoes are all, you know, thrown about the floor by the guests. They come in, they unload their bag, and they just throw their shoes down. We're gonna deal with shoes first. Okay, now secondly, you see when they come into the bathroom, they've got all their hairbrush and shampoo, uh, cologne bottles, cream bottles, razors, shavers, all this stuff. That's the second level, the bathrooms. But let's go back to the shoes because that's the first thing you're going to start doing that's going to show the guests, we're gonna entertain you, we're going to touch your stuff, we're going to take care of you because that's the next step after we've taken care of the hotel. We take care of the hotel in the occupied room by going in after they've messed everything up and putting all of their stuff back where it belongs according to the hotel standards. The next level, we're gonna to start touching personal guest items, shoes and bathroom amenities. If you just get those two things, oh my God, you go light years beyond what any other housekeeping department is doing. Oh no, but we've got to fix all these other things in the department before we get to something so complicated and time consuming as that. No, this is your priority, what's going on in an occupied room, not what's going on in the back of the house. You can fix that later. Don't wait for what's important to do that last. Do what's important first and entertain the guest and increase repeat business for the hotel and resort and drive tips through personal touch service. So as executive housekeeper, you're going to start displaying in the rooms what you're later going to teach the housekeepers to do. Now, see, here's the shoes again, all scrambled. You're going to start going into occupied rooms every day. You're going to pick the baseboard at the bottom of the wall, which is the standard placement in every occupied room for shoes that are lined up against the wall, paired up and lined up at a 45 degree angle, like little sports cars, with the heels you know, toward you so a guest can slip their feet in their own shoes and have convenience. You're going to start going into guest rooms every day and you alone are gonna start placing these, these shoes at the baseboard on the wall you choose. Why? So the housekeepers that go into the rooms start seeing this little phenomena. They start seeing this little magic. Wow, the shoes are already picked up for me. Look, they're lined against the wall. They're going to start getting used to seeing that standard in place. They're gonna wonder how this is happening, but you're not going to tell them. You're getting them familiar with what it looks like in a guest room and you watch a couple of things. First of all, they'll start putting the shoes over there too without you telling them, A. B, the guests will start returning their shoes to that placement. You watch, it's beautiful, it works. So you're going to do this for two or three weeks. You're gonna go in every day, you're not telling anybody, you're gonna start placing shoes. This is in rooms where you go in and you're by yourself. You'll do that for a couple of weeks just to get it going, get people looking at it, understanding it, comprehending it, becoming familiar with it. Repetition breeds familiarity. Familiarity breeds comfort. Comfort breeds credibility. Okay, so you go in and you start putting the shoes on the baseboard on the wall that you choose. That's your standard placement in every room. Then once they get used to seeing that and they have no idea how that started, it just started, then you're gonna start going into occupied rooms where the housekeeper is already in the room. And you're going to say to her, hey, see how I put these shoes in? Let's start putting the shoes in. They've already accepted it. They've become familiar, uh, it's credible, right? Uh, they get used to having it done for them and they see the convenience of having the shoes out of the way, all these different things. And you start one-on-one -on -one working with your housekeepers one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, let's start putting the shoes up. Just throw them up here, pair them up, put them up, boom. Takes 15 seconds. Do that one thing. It's all you ask of them. It's all that you require of them. And then you go with that for a couple of weeks. You go in, you keep changing the shoes to the standard that you have chosen. You keep going in and speaking with your housekeepers and you start telling them one-on-one -on -one in the rooms. You do not do this as a group in the morning meeting. You don't sit down with your entire department and say, everybody is going to do this. You cannot slam a department into a change like this. You cannot slam a department into a change like this. Housekeeping turns like a real slow boat a real slow barge. It's not a speedboat that just turns on a dime and goes like this. Repetition breeds familiarity. Familiarity breeds comfort. Comfort breeds credibility. Before you get to credibility, you've got to go through repetition, 
familiarity, comfort. So you do it real slow, one at a time, and before you know it, everybody's doing it without this big crazy, oh my God, we've got to do that now, change. No, 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 no we, go, we have time, we don't, no, 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 the vacant rooms are dirty. No, one at a time. First you display it, then you uh, get it to where uh, they get used to it, then you start going one-on-one -on -one with housekeepers in rooms they're working in that are occupied, and you start telling them, here, do this. It drives tips. It drives tips. It drives tips. You start giving them the motivation, which is money for them. Housekeeping needs to be a money-making department. You need to figure out what you do that drives tips. And you need to teach your people, hey, start doing stuff so you can make more money. And then finally, once everybody's been taught by you one-on-one -on -one in the rooms, after they've seen you display it on your own, seeing that you do it, and seeing the beauty of it, then you start your morning meetings with this for about two weeks. All right, I'll be in the occupied rooms today. All I'm looking for is to see that the shoes are paired up and put at a 45 degree angle against this baseboard that I have shown you. Now you're working with it as a group. Group is last individual first. If you try to get everybody in the department to do something brand new they've never seen or heard of before, they don't know what's going on. They don't know where it's going. It's not their fault. So they go, what is this? I don't know. I thought he said to do this. No, he didn't say to do that. It's all this confusion about what to do. Why? Housekeepers look to each other. You get one housekeeper going on something, and then when they get going on it, then you go to the next housekeeper and get them going on it. If they have a question, then they have somebody who's already experienced in it, if only for three weeks, they can go back to that person and they can chat with that person and verify. And then the third person starts doing it. Now they have company that already has answers for them. If you send them all out there with a direction and no experience with that direction, Ijole, you're gonna have chaos in your department. And what's next? Now we're gonna move to the bathroom. Shoes are a habit now. Easy, took a month, easy. Now we're gonna go to the bathrooms. I'm gonna start putting the washcloth down and start putting the guest personal amenities on the washcloth. The first thing I'm going to see is, is that the guests are gonna take their own amenities and start putting them on the washcloth and staying off the counter because they perceive the freshly laundered washcloth is a protective surface between their personal items and a sink counter that everybody and God knows who in the world is putting all kind of God knows what unsanitary things on that counter. They love the washcloth. And I'm going to start doing this in rooms. Nobody sees me. I'm not going to tell them. I'm just going to start doing it. Why? The housekeepers start going into occupied rooms and seeing this. They become familiar with it. It starts being seen over and over and over. Repetition. Repetition breeds comfort. They start getting used to it being like that. Comfort brings credibility. What's credibility? It ought to be like that. That's a better idea. Once I've gone and for two, three weeks, whatever, it's a slow boat. I'm not in a hurry. I'm into quality and comprehension. I'm not into change this now or you're in trouble. I go in, I start placing the bathroom amenities like I expect them to do. I get it all set up for them and then I do what? I go to one housekeeper and say, look, in your occupied rooms, washcloth down, toothbrush next to the sink, toothpaste next to that, little space between the, the stuff that goes in your mouth and the stuff that combs your hair, put that stuff over on the right, shine their cologne bottles, put them up like little soldiers, ready for service, facing you with the labels. They love those labels, they're proud of them. Let's use all of the, the attraction and the elegance of that little setup to impress the guests, to entertain them. Do you understand this is the entertainment? They want to be entertained and that entertains them. What exactly is the essence of this entertainment? You touch my stuff and make it nice. It's very entertaining, makes them feel wealthy like they have servants. Well, they do if you're playing your game right. So you get one housekeeper going on it, then you get another housekeeper going on it. Then you go in one-on-one -on -one and get another housekeeping person going on it. They've already seen it for three weeks now. They already get it. They already have seen it. They're already used to it. They see what the guest does to it, puts more things on the washcloth. They see, oh, they like this. Then you start working with the group. After this has gone on for three or four weeks, you've got everybody trained individually and they're used to it and they're starting to do it. Then you come in the morning for the next two or three weeks. All right, I'll be on your floors. I'll be looking at the in-room bathroom amenities. I'm gonna make, and you explain, you know, make sure the labels are facing forward. Then you amplify it, bring it into the group. It's all backwards from what you think it should be done. You display, 
You show the final product, then you teach them to get to the final product. Don't have them start the, the journey and they don't know what the destination is. Not only that, now you have people that are experienced. If somebody has a question, they can go to the person next to them and go, how do you do that? Oh, I like that. The excuse and the argument for mediocrity is, oh, we don't have time, we don't have time. Oh yeah, you do. You'll find you have time when the tips start to flow. It takes 90 seconds to set up the side of the ladies' bathroom amenities on the right and the men's bathroom amenities on the left. It takes 30 seconds to pair shoes and put them up against the wall and improve the quality of service. You gotta turn it all around to where occupied is more important than vacant. Touching guest items is more important than not touching them. All right, what are some of the other things you can do to grow beyond shoe placement and bathroom amenities, personal touch service? The huge one, the big one, take the luggage valet out of the closet. Most executive housekeepers, they just fold that thing up and lay it against the closet wall where it scratches paint and creates a maintenance issue. Put that thing out in a standard placement and have it ready and available in your vacant clean rooms so when the guest comes in, they can put their suitcase on it. Do they? Sometimes, about 50% of the time, no, they throw it on the bed, then they drop it to the floor. I'm telling you, I've seen this for years. All right, so you're gonna take their suitcase off of the floor and put it on the luggage valet. If they don't know to do it, you're going to do it for, for them. Why? Personal touch service, personal touch service drives tips. If they have a bunch of bags and they need more than one luggage valet, go get them, buy them so you have them. So the guest comes in after a long day at convention meetings or whatever. Oh my God, look what they did. They put my suitcase up on the luggage valet. Oh no, I have two big suitcases. They brought in another valet and put it up for me. How convenient. Look at how beautiful I am. Look at how wealthy I feel. Like I feel like I've made it, man. These people pay attention to me. They personally touch my stuff. That's the game. That's the psych psychology. That's the show business. That's the entertainment. Personal touch of their stuff. If you can't get there, you've gotten nowhere. You, you don't have a housekeeping department. You have a house cleaning department and that's all you have. Personal touch service eclipses cleaning. Their mind moves forward way beyond is it clean. Why? They're entertained. Placement of personal items in the bathroom, placement of luggage on a valet for the guest, placement of shoes up against the wall at a 45 degree angle so they can just slip their, their feet in easily and conveniently. This is all beyond cleaning. This is entertainment to the guest. If they have magazines, straighten them up in a pattern, fan them out, their magazine. Straighten their things on the desk, nice and neat. Just straighten them. Remember the three mysterious secrets of housekeeping, zero smell, nothing crooked, nothing missing. So get out of the office, get up on the floors and start driving those tips for your guest room attendants in your department. Start ah, entering into the level of show business you've never known before and start entertaining the guests. You've got to entertain them or you don't have anything. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com. <laughs>